Welcome to all. In this video, we will see techniques of plant culture. And first one is callus culture. So let's see what is callus. Callus is defined as an unorganized or undifferentiated mass of cells produced during the de-differentiation of explant cells under in vitro culture conditions. The callus cells are essential for the indirect organogenesis and indirect somatic embryogenesis process in the regeneration of full plant. The reversion of mature cells in explants back to primitive nature of the cell is called callus and the callus cells is achieved by modulating the proportion of auxins and cytokinins ratios in the culture media. More preferably, excess presence of auxins like 2,4-D trigger the callus induction. Generally, the presence of auxins in the nutrient media and culturing in the absence of light triggers the callus induction. Since not all the auxins trigger callus in all genotypes, it is necessary to find out suitable auxin. That means a specific type of auxin and its specific concentration for the optimum callus induction in a specific plant or within the plant specific genotype. Explant inoculation for the callus culture. Inoculation is performed in the semi-solid agar medium in the initial culture for the induction of callus. We have to place the explant and gently apply pressure so that the explant make good contact with the medium. The leaf beads are excised 1 square centimeter after sterilization and placed horizontally to contact with the nutrient medium. And stem bits are inoculated in a way of vertical direction in such a way that one piece of cutting end immerse inside the agar and another cutting piece exposing outside. PT holes generally laid horizontal in the medium. In addition, certain other parts like calyx, explants, embryo, endosperm also used for callus induction. In general, aseptically inoculated explants are cultured in primary growth room with approximately 25 degrees Celsius temperature and divide of light for three weeks. During this time, the pustules or protuberances like growth of callus will appear due to mitotic cell divisions of parenchyma residing in the explant. So callus induction in the culture medium. Um, many circumstances the explants produce callus in the medium suitable for subculture within 3 to 7 weeks after inoculation. The fresh callus intact with the explants can be carefully excised with the help of a sterile surgical blade or sterile scalpel. And the callus are used for subculture or go for another kind of manipulations as per need. The term sub subculture is the process of making new callus culture by inoculating part or entire cells of a previous callus culture into a fresh growth medium. The callus cultures may be maintained for a long period by subculturing in a fresh medium once in two to three weeks. The prolonged subculture of callus to several cycles leads to showing the signs of aging such as deceleration of growth that means decreased growth, necrotic or browning and finally desiccation of callus may appear. Now let's see the different types of callus. So uh, we can see the classification of callus based on different properties. Based on the texture, we can categorize into compact callus or friable callus. The compact callus shows densely aggregated cells and friable callus shows loosely associated cells. Generally in the early stage, after inoculation of explant, we can see it as loose friable callus and after some time it becomes dense compact callus. So loose friable callus is ideal for processings like preparation of suspension cell culture or single cell cultures than compact callus. And based on regeneration potential of the callus, the callus may be categorized into shoot callus, root callus or embryogenic callus. If the callus partially producing shoot or micro shoot like organs, it is called shoot callus. If the callus tend to produce root, it is called root callus. If the callus partially producing somatic embryo, like cells, it is called embryonic callus. 
and we call the term habituate callous that means over the prolonged peri period of subculture the callous lose the requirement for auxin or cytokine that is called habituate callous and based on color we categorize into white color callous colorless or sometimes green callous also appear from leaf explants and visualization we categorize into translucent callous and opaque callous so these are all different categories classified based on the different properties of callous and we can measure the callus growth by three methods one based on the fresh weight so this method is non destructive during subculture we can take the weight in a sterile plate uh, and sterile electronic medium which are present inside the laminar coat so it is a non destructive method we can use the callus for further subculture or other purpose next one is dry weight basis so here we have to sacrifice the callus so we have to take small portion dry it and take the weight and mitotic index so we can check the dna content and we can identify the mitotic ratio and we can find out the growth stage of callus uh, modern days it is performed with the help of flow, flow cytometry and we will see about the stages of callus growth generally callus growth followed the sigmoid curve and five different stages are reported one is called lag phase and next one is ex lag exponential phase and another one is linear phase and a deceleration phase uh, during deceleration phase some it can lose some of the cells to death and finally it will reach some stationary phase or very slow growth phase generally the stage 3 linear phase is perfect perfect for performing experiments or subculturing stage so end of stage 2 and beginning of stage 3 is ideal for carrying out or processing the callus next manipulations of callus so the callus can be manipulated by cutting a and cutting and culturing in a nutrient media with different concentration levels of auxins cytokinins and growth hormones the manipulation of growth hormones in the fresh culture medium may trigger either it shoot root or it can trigger the somatic embryo so if it trigger root and shoot it is called indirect arachnogenesis if it ends up in somatic embryo it is called somatic embryogenesis process in the callus in general cytokinins in fresh medium trigger callus to produce shoots is called micro shoots the later this micro shoots will be cultured in a fresh auxin rich medium to produce roots for the plant regeneration the callus culture also used for the production of single cells or suspension cells for this the cells are callus are cultured in a liquid medium with continuous agitation provided by a orbital shaker inside the culture room generally friable callus is ideal for the production of single cell or suspension cell culture now let's see applications of callus culture the callus culture used for the micro propagation and regeneration of plantlets in vitro root culture by indirect organogenesis for the extraction of phyto compounds or for root research purposes and third application is preparation of single cells or suspension cell culture is achieved by using a callus as a source and callus is ideal for preparation of protoplast since the friable callus is loosely arranged it is ideal for the protoplast preparation next one is callus culture used for the genetic transformation purpose for example agrobacterium transformation rice callus is used uh, similarly several crops callus is triggered for the development of transgenic plants and the next callus culture used for the in vitro selection of cells in tissue culture variants for example we can select high salt tolerant variants through screening in media containing high salt content like that and callus culture used for development of useful somo clonal vari variants that is useful for breeding purpose now we will see some of the factors influencing growth of callus so first one is explant type so the explant type from the from the plant which part we will use it as a explant highly influence the formation of callus most preferably leaf and uh, tender stem bits without nodes and petioles are highly preferable in addition some other parts also used for induction of callus 
and careless pollen induction is highly dependent on genotype generally in for example in the case of anther culture hybrids immature anthers perform well for induction of careless than varieties varieties are uh, inbreds and media the pr media preparation is ideal for the responsiveness of calle different types of medias are there and we have to identify right choice of medium for growing explants for callus induction and another factor is growth regulators so most common growth regulator oxin 24d is used and later stage cytokinin used for uh, in small proportions and uh, 24d alone is not performing better for all the plant types so we have to uh, find out the right right oxin suitable for triggering the callus next is the light or darkness maintained in the culture room for many crops maintaining dark for 2 to 3 weeks is ideal and some of the crops even presence of light also trigger the callus and the next one is temperature and relative humidity conditions since we culture in the closed vessel relative humidity is not a major factor in primary growth room but we have to properly maintain the temperature most of the crops perform well in 25 degree celsius very rarely some of the crops some of the explants require deviations from 25 degree celsius thank you for watching this video thank you